Can Christians be sarcastic? No. This is only my third video on the channel, and I'm shocked. Shocked, I say, at how many complaints I'm already receiving about my use of irony and sarcasm. And here I was expecting nothing but compliments. Here are a few. One person writes, The main problem I had with this video was that it seemed a bit mocking of people such as ourselves, and I think that is unnecessary. This guy says I have a sarcastic, snarky, unchristian attitude. Another person tells me, I think the sarcasm here was very unloving and not helpful. Well, I think that comment is very unloving and not helpful, except as an illustration for this video on sarcasm. The problem in comments like these is the assumption that sarcasm is necessarily mean-spirited and therefore wrong. And they're absolutely right. Unless you think the creator of the universe knows better. In Judges 10.14, the Lord sarcastically tells the apostate Israelites, Go and cry out to the gods whom you have chosen. Let them save you in your time of distress. In Jeremiah 2, the Lord mocks the people of Judah again. They say to wood, you are my father, and to stone, you gave me birth. They have turned their backs to me and not their faces. Yet when they are in trouble, they say, come and save us. Where then are the gods you made for yourselves? Let them come if they can save you when you're in trouble. Prophets are sarcastic too. When Job's friends comfort him in the midst of utter devastation with consoling reasons for how he must deserve such misery, he retorts, doubtless you are the only people who matter and wisdom will die with you. Wisdom is dead, guys. And no list of biblical sarcasm could neglect 1 Kings chapter 18 when Elijah taunts the prophets of Baal and Asherah at Mount Carmel who can't manage to summon their deity. Cry aloud, for he is a god. Either he's musing, or he's relieving himself, or he's on a journey, or perhaps he's asleep and must be awakened. Oh, that's the Old Testament, you say. God was meaner back then. The New Testament is all about making people happy. Oh, look at me. I'm making people happy. I'm the magical man from Happy Land. Sarcasm is not limited to the Old Testament, and Jesus himself is frequently sarcastic. Look at the Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew 7, 3 to 5, Jesus hilariously condemns hypocrisy with biting metaphor and sarcasm. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? You hypocrite! First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. In Mark 7, 9, Jesus tells the Pharisees, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. Now that's sarcasm. Does Jesus really believe it's fine to reject the commandments of God? In Matthew 23, Jesus declares the seven woes over the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the whole chapter is dripping with sarcasm. Here's a gem. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you tithe mint and dill and cumin, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. You blind guides, straining out a gnat and swallowing a camel. Jesus spoke these sarcastic condemnations for the benefit of his followers, so they wouldn't mimic the hypocrisy of their religious leaders. Now, if my demeanor is unchristian when I'm sarcastic, does that mean the Lord Jesus Christ himself was unchristian when he was sarcastic? Awkward. But that's Jesus, you say. He's God in the flesh, so obviously he can be sarcastic, just like God was in the Old Testament. You're right, I'm convinced. But what about the man born blind who received his sight from Jesus in John chapter 9? The Pharisees kept asking him how Jesus did it while complaining that the healing violated the Sabbath. After listening to the man's testimony, they went to his parents, then back to him. Exasperated, the healed man replies, I have told you already and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? At which point the Pharisees begin insulting him, but the man responds to their jeers with more sarcasm and a bit of tidy logic. Why, this is an amazing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. Oh, you object, the man born blind had only just met Jesus, so he wasn't actually a model for mature Christians. Truly, you have a dizzying intellect. Okay, well then, what about the Apostle Paul? 
His writing is saturated with multiple layers of irony and sarcasm. In 1 Corinthians 4, Paul criticizes the pride of the Corinthians and their lack of gratitude. Already you have all you want. Already you have become rich. Without us, you have become kings and would that you did reign so that we might share the rule with you. We are fools for Christ's sake, but you are wise in Christ. We are weak, but you are strong. You are held in honor, but we in disrepute. Then he adds in line 14, I do not write these things to make you ashamed, but to admonish you as my beloved children, thereby revealing that his poignant sarcasm is meant to correct the pride of the Corinthian church, not for sheer humiliation, but because Paul loves them, as a father loves the child he disciplines. In 2 Corinthians, a letter filled with some of the most encouraging passages in the scriptures, Paul's sarcasm is also in full effect, as he addresses mockery by some in the church over the fact that he did not receive financial support from the Corinthians. In chapter 11, he calls himself a thief, saying, I robbed other churches by accepting support from them in order to serve you. Then addressing the others who were miffed that he didn't ask them for money, he says in 1213, For in what respect were you treated as inferior to the rest of the churches, except that I myself did not become a burden to you? Forgive me this wrong. Adding a little later, I did not burden you myself. Nevertheless, crafty fellow that I am, I took you in by deceit. If we didn't grant that Paul was sarcastic, then we would have to take Paul's words literally about robbing churches and catching people by trickery. Not only is sarcasm in the Bible, but without understanding sarcasm, we wouldn't be able to correctly understand parts of the Bible. But the case in defense of sarcasm gets even stronger. In Galatians 5, Paul denounces the Judaizers who wanted Gentile converts to Christ to be circumcised and follow the Old Testament laws, pointing out that such acts deny salvation by grace, finally declaring, I wish those who unsettle you would castrate themselves. Then just a few lines later, in the very same chapter, Paul states the familiar fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Apparently, Paul sees no inconsistency with sarcasm in these fruits of the Spirit. Too bad modern critics of sarcasm weren't around to tell the Apostle Paul how to be a better Christian. Don't get me wrong. I realize some people are sincerely and rightly concerned about the manner in which we speak to each other. After all, the classic apologetics verse, 1 Peter 3.15, exhorts us to answer people's questions about our hope in Christ with gentleness and respect. On the other hand, the word sarcasm is derived from the Greek word sarx, meaning flesh, and sarcasmos, meaning to tear the flesh, which is, in fact, a metaphor of the reaction one has to the piercing, ironic humor that characterizes sarcasm. It doesn't sound very nice. And as we all know, Christians always have to be nice and focus on making people happy. In a gumdrop house, a lollipop lane. However, I grant that a lot of times people really do use sarcasm simply to be mean for the sake of being mean, or because their anger is out of control, or because they're insecure or a bit socially challenged. Hopefully it's clear to everyone that our perfect and sinless Lord does not fall into those categories. Jesus's sarcasm and Paul's sarcasm was always purposeful and either for the sake of causing repentance in the person receiving it, or as in the case of the hard-hearted Pharisees and the Judaizers, for the sake of the people being led astray by them. So, do we have biblical precedent to be sarcastic? Well, duh. But the more pressing question, perhaps, is should we be sarcastic since, as Paul says, all things are permissible, but not all things are profitable. By the way, he was being sarcastic here about all things being permissible. Sarcasm is permissible, but not always profitable. Sarcasm has a place in our modes of communication as a tool of correction and rebuke. But it is also a weapon, similar to a butterfly knife. Not everyone has the skill to wield this cutting instrument without causing undue harm to others and themselves. So sarcasm is not for everybody, nor for every time. However, when used in the right hands and with the right spirit, sarcasm can be a Christ-like mode of jabbing at pride and self-righteousness, only to be used when necessary in order to smack us out of deeply entrenched beliefs and behaviors or to protect the vulnerable from poor guidance, not to be used as our primary mode of communication, unless you want everyone to hate you, and certainly never used to silence or belittle a sincere questioner such as the truth seekers referred to in 1 Peter 3.15. 1 
Furthermore, if you're ready to use it, be ready to take it. Use sarcasm wisely and with care, knowing that on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word they speak. And as the writer of Proverbs tells us, the tongue has power over life and death and those who love it will eat its fruit. Speak life then, as often as possible. But if your words do cause death, let them cause death not to people but to things which should die so that something good instead can live. Oh, and if you're going to unsubscribe because of our sarcasm and satire, all I can say is... Stop! Don't! Sorry, I'm a terrible person. Oh, by the way, I was being sarcastic. Awkward. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, did I look like a twitchy-eyed whore? <laughs> what are they calling?